Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're gonna be going over my washing procedure. Uh, first and foremost, keep this in mind, this is just my method. This is just the ways that I have established over the many years of trying different items, different, different ways, different techniques. Uh, this is just the way that I do it um, and the way that I found that it works best for me. Um, so you don't necessarily have to follow this to a T and think that this is the only way. Um, there's other ways to do this, so don't get stuck on exactly what I'm doing. Uh, but if you wanna follow along, if you wanna learn as to why I'm doing certain things, um, this will definitely be a good video to watch. Uh, I've already done a wheel wash video, talking from, you know, the, from the start all the way to the finish, basically, of how I clean my wheels, uh, which I've already done, you can't, if you can't already tell. Uh, the ground is wet since i already did the wheels i wasn't going to do another video on that uh, this video is just going to be on my washing technique so it's going to be simply using a two bucket method you know rinsing off how i you know, what kind of soap i use um and and all that you know the foam and all that uh, so you know i'll go over each product i'll explain everything that i'm doing uh, just so if anybody's interested in just how to wash uh, this will be a good video for you. Uh, I will be doing separate videos on each on each step. Like I said, I already did the, the wheel wash. Uh, this one's going to be on the actual car wash the, on the paint. Uh, following is gonna be another video. It's gonna be the uh, whole entire drying video, how I dry my car. Um, and then, you know, I'm gonna do the windows, the interior and everything like that. It's gonna be a complete breakdown of my whole entire wash procedure. So be on the lookout for more videos on this. This is the part two of the video series of the, wa of the wash series. Um, so, and this is probably the one that most people are interested in. Also keep in mind, anything that I use in this video, every single link or every single product, there's a link below. Uh, whether you wanna get it through Obsessed Garage or you wanna just use the Amazon links below, uh, it doesn't matter either way, it helps the channel out. And I suggest, you know, if you are looking to purchase any of these products that I am using in this video, please use the links below because it really does help the channel. It goes, I put it directly back into the channel uh, to help, you know, keeping this grow and keep bringing out content for you guys. So I really appreciate it. So let's get to finally washing the car. All right, so first step, it's just a simple rinse. Uh, I use a pressure washer. I'll, you can see over here, uh, that's my pressure washer setup. Uh, it's just a Greenworks 2000 pressure washer. Uh, I got a, a 50 foot hose um, and I have a, a water outlet right outside of the garage here that I just hook right up to there. I'll show you the pressure washer gun that I use, uh, but it's a very simple setup. It was uh, at the time, I believe I got the pressure washer for under hundred dollars. I think it was like 70 bucks. It was on a crazy sale. Uh, but I believe around now it's about 150, 200 bucks or so. Um, but it's an electric pr pressure washer. I don't like gas, uh, mainly because there's no need to have that much pressure when washing a car. So, um, you know, electric pressure washer is totally fine. There's tons of different ones out there. You know, the, the cheaper ones like this, like the Greenworks one, uh, they're all relatively the same. Matt from Obsessed Garage did an entire... Uh, did an entire test on all different types of pressure washers, you know, the good ones, the cheap ones. Um, and ultimately, you know, he has a different taste than a lot of us out there, which I totally understand. I have his taste, but, um, you know, I, not everybody has his means and his money to be able to do those things. So, um, you know, I'm kind of just trying to find that, that niche, that niche where people, um, can relate a little bit more, uh, you know, cause we don't have the means to be able to do that at the moment. So this is my setup. Uh, it works really great. It foams really well. Uh, I've had it for about two years now and it, or eh, probably about a year and a half. Uh, and it has never failed me. It's been great. So I'll show you the gun, uh, and then we'll spray the car down and then we'll take the next step. All right. So this is my pressure washer setup. Everything is on quick, quick disconnects. Um, you know, I want to upgrade all this to stainless steel, but the brass has been working fine for many years. Uh, it's a little, you know, corroded and stuff just from being used so many times, uh, but it still gets the job done. I'm going to upgrade to the uh, nicer Obsessed Garage one at some point, but this one was super cheap. I think it was like 20, 30 bucks at the time. Uh, again, the link is below, but it's the MTM M407. So it's like a shorty gun. It's nothing long. It doesn't have any long extension, so it doesn't get in the way. Uh, I am using a 25 degree nozzle. Um, most people use a 40, but for, uh, I guess my pressure washer and everything, uh, the, I found the 25 to be the best, uh, in terms of pressure. Uh, you're mainly looking around for about 900 PSI, uh, nothing too harsh. That's going to be, you know, going to damage the paint. You want something that's obviously going to be strong enough to knock the dirt off and, and give you good foam and everything. This is the setup that I found to work the best.
just real quick, two things that I always do before the wash or before the rinse down as I lift the uh, windshield wipers and I also open the gas cap over here uh, just to get a good cleaning, get underneath everything. Um, and, you know, some people just don't even open that uh, or they leave the, um, the wipers down. You can do either or, but for me, I like to kind of open things up and not let anything get in the way. Um, that way I get a good, a good, good access to the whole entire windshield. I don't have to lift up. Uh, windshield wipers and getting in the way and them flopping down and everything uh, so I always do that that's the first thing I do I should have mentioned that before I rinse it down uh, but I kind of just um, you know I didn't record that but I figured I would mention it because I'm I'm doing a pretty uh, detailed ex explanation of my washing procedure all right so these are the buckets that I use these are the Adams polishes uh, soap and rinse bucket you can use any buckets it doesn't really matter which one uh, you know as long as they're just you know big enough to be able to get uh, a good amount of soap in there um, I also have on the bottom, as you can see, I also have the grit guards, uh, which is, I found to, I don't know, uh, I've been using them for years and they've, you know, I seem to work, but I can't really um, say if they definitely do or not. Uh, but I like having having there just for reinsurance. Basically what they do is they stay at the bottom of the bucket and they're lifted up, see on the, on the, uh, the, like the risers here. So it's basically um, all the dirt sinks to the bottom uh, and it allows when you put the, uh, the actual, mid in there, it doesn't get contaminated and bring up all that dirt that you just took off the car back onto the pad. All right, so this is two, I use a two bucket method and the reason for that is um, I found it work to work best for me. Uh, I have lapis blue paint here um, and uh, Subaru paint isn't the best. Uh, it can, it does scratch very easily. It's known as sticky paint, uh, mainly because a lot of the contaminants and the debris and stuff on the road uh, tends to ad adhere to it very uh, quickly and easily. Um, so using a two bucket method is always a, a safe method and technique to do, uh, mainly because it slows down the chances of swirling your paint. Um, you know, because if you're dipping your mitt into the same bucket over and over and over, um, you know, you're just bringing everything that you just took off the car, you're putting basically right back on. It has a higher chance of scratching and, and swirling and hazing and creating all different types of damage to your paint. So uh, basically the, the whole method behind it is you want to have one, filled with soap that you're gonna to use to actually wash the car and one with clean water, uh, which is my rinse bucket over there, over here, sorry. And uh, you know, you'll dip it into the soap, wash the car, or wash a panel, uh, you know, flip it over, do another panel, and then you wanna dip it into the rinse bucket. Again, I'm gonna go over this and you know, and actually as I'm doing it, uh, but I wanted to explain it quickly. Uh, so what I do in my method, um, the first thing that I do is I take my wash mitt. This is an Incredipad that you can get from Obsessed Garage. You can just click out the link below to get that. Uh, I also use Adam's soap. This is my favorite uh, wa uh, car wash soap. I've tried others, but I always seem to go right back to Adam's soap. It foams the best. It feels really good on the paint. It's very, um, has a lot of lubricity. Um, and it just, I don't know. I just always come back to it. I, I have yet to find another uh, one that I like as much. Chemical Guys has a product or soap that a lot of people use that's okay. Uh, I've used it before, I've tried it, uh, but I just didn't love it. Um, Adam's soap is just my go-to uh, and it's it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, I think for a gallon or something, it's about 30 bucks. Um, uh, obviously, as you can see, I don't use the Adam's bottles. I use my own. Uh, these are actually, believe it or not, by Chemical Guys. I just like the clear look of it and they look nice in my cabinet. Um, they, they're a little dented up here, at least for this one, because I squeeze it, but the other ones are perfectly fine. I also label everything just so I know what it is, even though I know what it is because I use it all the time. Uh, but this is my staple, always use this. Uh, so the first step is I'm gonna take my pad and basically just put some soap right on the pad. And the reason for that is when you do that, when you fill it up, the foam doesn't just spray everywhere, uh, or the soap, the suds. Uh, this way it stays on the pad and it, it, all the uh, the suds and the and actual soap stay into the actual bucket. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put this in my uh, soap bucket, fill them up, uh, and then we'll go to the actual foaming process. All right, so I'm gonna take my hose. It's not a hose filler, it's just the same one that I use on my pressure washer. Uh, nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. I have an on and off lever here. Uh, which is really nice because I can just, you know, I don't have to go back to the spigot and turn it on and off. I highly suggest investing in, in a, like a ball, ball valve type of uh, connection here. Also got my stainless quick connect that goes right to the pressure washer. Um, but simply all I'm going to do is fill up the soap bucket first. You'll see it foam up really nicely. Uh, and then I'm going to go over to the, to the rinse. So let's get that done.
So all I'm gonna do is hook up the hose back to the pressure washer, and uh, then we're gonna fill up the phone cannon, which I'll show you step by step as well, uh, and then we'll get to actually washing the car. All right, guys, so this is my foam gun. This is the MTM PF22. This is, uh, at the moment, the best uh, foam cannon, foam, uh, whatever you wanna call it, foam lance. Um, this one is, you know, it's the best of the best currently. Yeah, it just foams so well. Uh, I have a 1.1 orifice inside, you can't see it, uh, but it allows more air to pass through and, and it just foams up really nice. So you can change that orifice. It comes with uh, the normal, the stock one, which I believe is 1.0, uh, but you can change it to 1.1. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, go check out Matt Mormon, Obsessed Garage. He describes everything more in detail than I ever could, um, but that's basically the gist of it. So this is what it looks like. They did create a new bottle for this, which is a little bit wider uh, that you can actually stand. It's, you know, it stands up if you actually put it on the ground. Uh, this one gets a little wobbly, so uh, I really didn't find a big need for it at the moment, but I'm sure I'll upgrade at some point, but this one works just fine. So what I'm gonna do is, if you look on the, the lines over here, uh, it might be hard to see. This is the first line, the second line. So I'm gonna fill it up with soap for the second line or a little bit under. Yeah, it is a lot of soap and you do end up using more soap than normal. Uh, but the whole, I think the fun of washing a car for me is the foam part. So I like to make sure that I get a good foam uh, just to you know keep as much soap and lubricity on the car as possible. Because uh, I've found that it just completely uh, eliminates swirling. I mean, there, eventually it's going to happen uh, over time, but it's going to very much reduce the amount that it's going to happen. So you have less work when you do correct your paint. All right, got my Adam soap. So we just gotta pop the top. The line we're going to is right here. So now we're just gonna fill it up. It does seem like a lot of soap. It is, especially, you know, you use the, uh, you know, you filled up your soap bucket already as well. So that's a decent amount of soap, but whatever. It's my hobby of mine and I enjoy it. So, so I say you can't really tell, but I'm like a little bit under the second line, hard to tell, not focusing. Um, a little bit on the second line, but I found that to be uh, around the best. Obviously, the more soap you do, uh, if you go, I don't, I've never tried up to the third line just because that's, I think it's too much soap. Uh, but I've done a little bit over two, and it's it foams really, really well. Uh, I usually do that. The car is really, really dirty right now. The car is fairly clean. I am not driving it that much, uh, just because of you know what's going on and everything. Um, so I, you know, that's gonna foam up just fine for my needs right now. All right, so to fill this up, a lot of people just go to a sink and fill it up, but when you do that all the suds and the foam kind of shoot out. Uh, so I found the best way to do this is actually go up to your rinse bucket and just kind of dip it in and the water fills up. You don't get the, the foam or the soap rushing out of the top, the suds. You get full use of all the soap that you actually put in here. All right, so that's about to where I fill it. I leave a little bit just so I can, um, you put my finger in it, you mix it up just to make sure there's no soap left on the bottom. You don't want to do this too early because if you do, the soap tends to uh, stick at the bottom and you don't really get as good of a foam. So you want to do this right before you foam uh, the car down. Uh, so you, you know you don't want to do this early because if you do, it doesn't work. Ask me how I know. All right, so all you want to do is take off your attachment here, hook on your pressure washer or your foam cannon, locked in, and there you go, that's what it looks like. So I never end up using the full amount of soap. Uh, I usually leave a little bit because if you uh, go all the way down, it starts just shooting water out and it kind of gets the foam off the car. So any uh, soap that I do have left, all I do is just take it out, put it right into my soap bucket, and then I just rinse this out.
All right, so this is what we're working with. Uh, the soap, you know, the foam has been sitting on the car for a couple of minutes now. Uh, what I do, a lot of people, you know, this this is kind of where it separates some people. Some people just like to rinse it off uh, and then wash the car, uh, or simply just rinse it off and that, that you know they're done with their wash. Uh, but for me, I like to let the soap or the foam sit on the car. Um, you can see it's just you know slowly moving down. And then it just drips off onto the bottom here. Uh, and what that does, or what that's doing, it's literally pulling uh, all the contaminants and the, and the loose dirt and everything that's kind of sitting right on top uh, and just pulling it down with the foam. And the reason for that is it, it allows you uh, to get all the, the main grime off the car instead of scrubbing it in um, and, you know, with your wash mitt. It gives it a chance to actually just let the soap work and pull it off the car without you even having to do anything. Uh, I've said this in a video before, but you pay for all this detailing stuff. Uh, you know, you want to have the products work for you. It's just, it's kind of sounds funny, but uh, that's what you basically want to do. You want you want the products to actually let them do work. Uh, so now I'm going to let it sit for about you know four or five minutes or so, uh, and then I'm actually just going to wash. And the re I'm going to leave the, the foam on here uh, because I want as much lubricity as possible. I want as much suds. Uh, to, I want the, the, the mitt to glide over the paint. I don't want to scrub on dry paint or anything like that or wet paint. I want it to have soap on there. So I found this is the best step for me uh, to keep, especially this color, Lapis Blue, on the Subarus and STIs and WRXs uh, to keep it pretty much swirl free. All right guys, so the foam has been sitting for about five minutes now. Uh, so this is basically what it looks like when I'm about to actually wash the car. Uh, you know, you basically, you know, you don't want to see the paint completely, uh, but you want a, a good amount of the foam to run off. Um, I'm going to, what you should always do, and what I always do, is I work from the top down. I'll show you the route that I go around the car, uh, just what I do. Again, this is just my method. You can do it any way you want, uh, but this is just the way uh, I found to be the most efficient for me. All right, so now I've used this side on the, the on the driver's side, windshield, roof, and back glass. So now I'm gonna go over to the passenger side, flip it over since this is a clean side, and use this on the same on the same pass. All right, so we've done the top so far, the roof, the front windshield, and the rear windshield. Now I'm gonna do my first rinse since I use, use both sides. Uh, so I'm just gonna basically gonna dip it in the rinse bucket, squeeze it a little bit, uh, and then put it right back in the soap. I like to do the hood next, because uh, it's basically the top parts of the car. Uh, I'm basically do the same thing. I'm gonna do the driver's side on one side of the pad. I'll get over to the passenger side, then flip it over, uh, and then I'm gonna rinse again. You wanna let the pad do the work. You don't wanna push down. Uh, you kinda just wanna let it glaze over the paint. I'll show you just how much pressure I'm actually putting on, but you don't wanna sit there and scrub, because that's what kinda introduces swirls and hazing and, and swirls and everything that, that can get you into trouble. So let the pad do the work. This pad gets pretty heavy. It fills with a lot of soap, uh, so it actually has a decent amount of you know pressure. You don't even have to push anything down. So as you can see, I'm not even putting any pressure on. I'm letting the pad do the work. Now we're gonna flip it over to, to the clean side, do the passenger side. We're gonna go over to my rinse bucket now. I'll just take you with me, do the same thing and rinse it out. Next part I do is the uh, uh, sorry the, the trunk and the spoiler. I don't go on the back side of it. That's actually the last part I do because I've found the rear bumper on these cars to really hold a lot of dirt. Uh, so that is the last panel that I do, but I'm gonna do the top first uh, because like I said, I'm working from my the top down. So I've already done the driver's side, but I, uh, I'll just talk you through on the passenger side. Um, basically now I'm just gonna do the windows up here and then start with the fender, door, rear door, 
the rear quarter. And then I'm gonna use one side of the pad to do one panel, flip it over, do the door, rinse, one side of the pad, flip it over, do the rear rear quarter. Uh, so that way you're doing basically two, <coughs> two dip, dips into the soap and rinse bucket, uh, but it allows a much faster, uh, quicker way. Obviously you can do, you can dip the, the pad in the, in the uh, rinse and soap bucket for each panel, but I found that unnecessary just because you have a clean side uh, of the pad that you can just kind of flip flop as you move through it. Now I'm going to go rinse. All right, so that concludes the actual washing of the car. Now I'm just gonna rinse it down and we can wrap up this video. Like I said, there's gonna be a whole other video about the whole drying process. So uh, sorry if I disappoint you guys, if you don't, you're not gonna see the full entire wash, but I wanted to break it up, mainly because I didn't want to uh, have, you know, two hour long video, uh, but I also wanted to break it down into steps. So if anybody's interested in just the specific wash step, uh, they can watch just this video and not have to scroll through, you know, like I said, a very long, very long uh, video. So uh, I'm, all I'm gonna do is rinse it down with the pressure washer and then uh, I'll kind of go over quickly everything that I used and kind of wrap this up. All right guys, so that wraps up the, the wash video. Like I said, the drying is gonna be a different one, uh, but I just wanted to go over each step of the actual wash process. So if anybody had any questions, I can just direct them to this video. They can follow along, use the products I use, whatever you want. Uh, but I've, I found it would be very helpful because I get this asked this question uh, more times than I even can count. <laughs> uh, it's pretty crazy. So making this video is not only gonna help me, but it'll also help you guys, uh, which is what I, what I do these videos for. So uh, I, I'm gonna go over the products real quickly again of what I use just so uh, we kind of do like a recap. So if anybody's interested exactly or they missed it or something, uh, they can see it all at the end of this video. The products that I use, this is the Greenworks 2000 pressure washer. I find it to be very, it works very well, gets the job done. It's about uh, 800, 900 PSI, even though it says 2000. Uh, I don't even think it's anywhere near that, 1.2 gallons per minute. I don't think it's anywhere near that, but it gets the job done as you can, as you saw, it foams up really nicely. A lot of that is that with the help of the MTM uh, or the PF22 uh, foam cannon, but still this gets the job done. The gun I use is an MTM M407 um, and I use a 25 degree nozzle. The buckets I use are Adams, uh, a rinse and soap bucket. You can use any bucket for my wheel bucket. Uh, if you saw that video, it's actually sitting over there. Uh, it's just a Home Depot bucket, which is, you can use the same thing. It's all the same. I have the grit guards down in the bottom of each of these buckets. Uh, this is the IncrediPad wash pad. Um, I love this thing. No debris or dirt or anything really gets stuck in it. It rinses off really well, and I found that it really works well on this paint. As for products, the only thing that I use uh, is the Adams Car Wash Soap. This is my favorite. It soaps up really, really well, and it gets the job done. Uh, like I said, I've tried other things, uh, but this is the best, at least for me, that i found to work uh, really well for my application. Uh, my foam cannon over here, I'm letting it dry. Uh, this is the MTM PF22 foam cannon, as I said. Um, this is the best that you can get basically right now. 
Um, you know, there might be something coming out in the future that might be better, but for now, this is it. Uh, and I absolutely love it. But that's pretty much it. Uh, there's nothing crazy. It's only one product, basically, or one chemical, if you want to call it. Um, and it's very, very simple. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, you know, like I said, I get asked this question more times than you can possibly even imagine. Uh, so having this video will really, really help. Uh, the car was really clean to begin with, so it didn't really change that much. But as you can see, just, just from the wash, uh, the depth is there. Thanks guys for watching. I'm just gonna remind you once again, all the products that I used are in the Amazon links below, or you can get uh, anything that is not there through Obsessed Garage. Um, uh, everything that I use is in that description below. So please do me a favor and use those links. It helps me out and helps the channel out and it allows me to continue to do these videos. So if you haven't, be sure to like the video. It really does help more than you actually know. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I would appreciate it. I love seeing this channel grow. And yeah, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one.